The imitation stage is based upon assessment and it's one of the reasons why talk for writing works when it's done proficiently. We use assessment to focus the learning, to focus down that teaching, to make sure that the children move forwards. Very often teachers call this a cold task, um, some call it uh, have a go, have your best go. We set up some sort of situation in which the children are going to write. Let's imagine that we're going to do some letter writing uh, and our main purpose is to persuade somebody in this letter. So we're learning persuasive writing and we're going to do it in the form of a letter. So imagine we're in year five or six, you know, important type of writing uh, for children to learn in primary school. So we'd set up a situation uh, in which uh, we have some sort of discussion around um, let's say that locally there's a river, I remember in Cardiff having this, there's a river right by the school, a sort of stream really, and it was a dumping ground. There were old shopping trolleys in there, people chucked rubbish in there. And that was used for the cold task, the initial assessment. They had a good discussion about it, and then they drafted letters um, in the lesson to the local council, and the idea was that they were going to try and persuade the local council to remove the rubbish and clean the uh, site up. So the children are given content, they're given the starting point, but what we don't do is teach them anything. So what we're trying to see is what have they learned? They're in year six. They will know about letter writing. They will know about persuasive writing because they've done it beforehand. So what we're trying to see is what have they learned? Independently, what can they do? Now, this isn't a matter of cruelty. I have had people say um, things like, oh, they cry when we do it. Well, if you're being cruel and mean to them, stop doing it. So we need some decent content. We need to engage them, give them a sense of an age of purpose. I saw a cracking one down in Cornwall where I was about to go into year one class and the TA appeared dressed as a monster. And I was at the door and she was peering through the door. I said, what are you doing? She says, I'm waiting for my cue, which amused me. The cue came, in she went, behaved like a monster, tipped the bin on the floor and ran out. Then the teacher led a long discussion about um, how there was a monster loose in the school. What are we going to do? And they, she steered it a bit so that the children decided with her, we need to write some instructions how to catch the monster. So everybody was fired up. They were all geared up. They had a bit of a go. Now, once they had a go, then whether it be the letter or the instructions in year one, then the teacher can do some assessment. We can then look at that and think to ourselves, right, what do we need to teach in order for the children to learn more and make progress here? What about the whole structure? Are these texts well structured? Have we got a clear beginning, middle and end in terms of instructions? Have we got an introductory paragraph? Does it tell us what we need, what we do in a logical order? Does it round it off nicely? What sorts of persuasive devices are being used in the persuasive letter? Does it set out um, the purpose of the letter initially is a proper introduction. Is it talking to uh, our audience, etc.? So we can look at the structure, we can look at the paragraphs, the way in which they're linked, is the good detail there? Is the language chosen in order to create an effect upon the reader or are they just bugging words in in order to try and show off, which is never going to get us uh, to be a proficient writer. They have to think about the audience and the purpose, of course. So we can do our assessment there and be thinking about, OK, what have I got to teach in this unit? That may help us pitch the model text at the right level. So each year you might find that you're having to tweak and adapt your model text a little bit and the unit of work in relation to what those children need. We'll be deciding what do we need to teach the whole class? What do we teach different groups of children? We may even set individual targets for children, either using symbols with little ones or, um, I mean, if they're all in year six, there are going to be several things that are very much in common that we want them to focus on. Uh, and those targets we can pursue all the way through from the beginning. We can focus on them during the unit of work and then see whether or not the children have moved forward and made progress with them by the end. So it gives them a little focus to be thinking about. And um, so the cold drives, the cold task, the formative assessment drives that unit of work. And then at the end of the unit, we can look at the hot task. The hot task or show us what you can do, show us what you know, structure stuff now at this particular point. So this is where they have a go independently again and it's the payoff from all the work that we've done. We can then compare the beginning, 
and the end. And if we look in any of the books here, we would see, for instance, the book that I've got here, um, is very nicely set out for us in terms of, it's a wishing tale called The King of the Fishes, and this is uh, in year four. And I can see here on a blue piece of paper, I can see the um, cold task. And then if I flick over, I can begin to see the work that has arisen as a result of that. I've got some nice little descriptive writing. I can see um, some comprehension work that has been going on. The model text is there. Um, some more comprehension work. I can see um, some grammar work in relation to, um, because we do grammar in context. We've got a story map. Um, we have some planning here um, for the innovation, the independent application. Um, we've got a writing tool, all the tools that we're going to need. And then into over two or three pages, into the innovation. And then on a yellow piece of paper at the end, we have the independent piece, the independent application. And that means the child can see whether or not they've moved forwards and what they've learned. The teacher can quickly see, have we all moved forwards? Have we learned? Did the teaching pay off? And if not, we can reconsider what we were doing. If you're a senior management team, it's very quick and easy to see whether we're making progress. And of course, parents love it because it's very, very obvious. This is where we were. This is what, where we've got to. And we can see, just by reading it through, we can see whether or not we have made progress. And in this instance, in this particular school that we're in, um, they put the targets in at the beginning and at the end. And the teacher is just double checking here with the child whether or not those targets have been achieved. Uh, in a way that um, has improved the quality of the writing. So that's the formative assessment bit, the cold to the hot task. I'll just say with very small children, that is done orally. So if I looked at, um, at the reception class, I would see that um, early on they're recording the children uh, to see um, with simple questions like, can you tell me a story that you know? So we can see where they are. And many children come into school and don't know what we're talking about. So they go from nothing, but by the end of the year, they will be telling whole stories, retelling whole stories. So with the little ones, the younger ones in nursery and reception, we do quite a lot of oral assessment because obviously we're developing composition orally, um, but the writing hasn't yet taken off so much because they're learning phonics and handwriting, etc. So that's how the assessment drives the unit of work.